You're listening to the Fort Erie Podcast, your local source for upcoming events, hot new listings, and bite-sized interviews with business and community leaders. Here's your host, Brent Jones. Hello and welcome to the Fort Erie Podcast. I'm your host, Brent Jones, and welcome to episode 10, airing December 10th, 2019, the last episode of season one and the last episode of 2019. I mentioned last week that I'd be giving away $50 to the Village Boutique in Ridgeway, just in time for Christmas, and I'm going to cover that first to start the episode. So don't skip ahead, because here is your chance to win 50 bucks. Now, check out the show notes below this episode. You can do that either by you know, checking out the notes on whatever podcast player it is you use or by heading over to the Fort Erie podcast.com and accessing the show notes below episode 10. You'll find a link in the show notes to a survey, the season one survey. And uh, basically you click that link. It's going to take you over to a new page and ask you a few questions. What did you like best about season one? What would you like to see changed or improved possibly for season two? It's going to take you about five minutes or so to complete that survey. And then as my way of saying thanks, you get entered into a draw uh, to win this gift card to the Village Boutique. I'm going to be drawing one name at random next week. It could be yours, but I think the most important part of all is that your feedback here is going to help me decide how to make this show the best it can be going into season two. And uh, if you're curious, I, I plan or I hope to have season two premiere sometime around February, sometime in February, ideally. Now, in today's episode, I'm going to be talking with all-round Crystal Beach celebrity Phil Smith. Uh, but first, let me cover two hot new real estate listings, uh, my picks of the week. And I chose both of these because they're newly renovated and show beautifully. And I just hope, dear listener, that by the time you're listening to this episode, that they're uh, still available for you to have a look at, because I predict both of them will go quickly. So the first listing I want to touch on is 83 Murray Street in Fort Erie. That's listed by my colleague and team leader, Ray Rosatani, Remax Niagara Realty. It, uh, this home is a one and a half story home on a corner lot that's 148 feet deep. It has five bedrooms and two and a half, ba- uh, two and a half bathrooms, a lot of living space. Uh, open concept main floor with a spiral staircase. And uh, this home is available for immediate possession. It would be ideal for a very large family. And then my second pick for the week is 725 Dominion Road here in Fort Erie, uh, listed by Belinda Butler of Century 21 Today Realty. Uh, this is a bungalow and this home is uh, just steps to the shores of Lake Erie and Waverly Beach. It has uh, a nice open concept kitchen, living, and family area, and uh, it's got some great features like newer shingles, newer central air, newer furnace, and a gas fireplace. So you can get more info about either of these listings by clicking the links uh, below this episode in the show notes. Of course, if you have real estate questions, you're thinking of buying or selling, you can call me directly at 905-626-8826. But for right now, let's get on to my chat with Phil Smith. I am sitting here at South Coast Cookhouse with none other than Phil Smith. And for those of you who don't know Phil, uh, Phil is a real estate agent extraordinaire. He is the owner of South Coast Cookhouse, and he is also a member of the board on the Crystal Beach BIA. So welcome to the show, Phil. Well, thanks for having me, Brian. I really appreciate it. I I like to start usually conversations with guests with asking uh, one very, very simple question, which is, and maybe in your case, more specifically geared to Crystal Beach, but what is it that makes Fort Erie such an awesome place to work and live? You know, I, I, I love Fort Erie. Um, it really is a great place to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at even just at the very start, our geography, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So we're in a great position. Um, we're surrounded by water. We have lakes, we have rivers. We're close to the United States and Buffalo and all the great things that that has to offer. Mm-hmm. A lot of great things going on in Buffalo, uh, sports and concerts. And yeah, to yeah. have a great airport too is, uh, is a big benefit to be right, able to travel right. and stuff. So, uh, and then of course we're close to other things in Niagara. We're close to Niagara Falls, but not sort of right on top of it. Right, right. Iron Lake, Toronto, all those things. Yeah. So I think we're in a great spot. We kind of have the best of, of both worlds. Oh, I agree, 100%. Yeah. When did you get started in real estate? I got started in real estate in 1997. Okay. Uh, when I was a young whippersnapper. I was only 18 at the time. <laughs> wow. But I had had uh, two years of co-op okay. uh, in my high school right. years, uh, 16 and 17. So funny story, when I took the course, you have to be 18 to have your license, yeah. but you can yeah. be 
um, 17 to start the course at the time. Oh, okay. I did it by correspondence. That's all. <laughs> little, little punch cards. Uh, so I, I remember that we, we we wrote a test, one of the tests, and yeah. and uh, people wanted to go to celebrate to have a have a drink. I wasn't old enough to go out with everybody mm-hmm. at the time. Okay, so I sure. I just had to have some pot maybe. But uh, yeah, it's been a, a great um, you know 20. Four years now or so. So, well, when you got started, I mean, was was being an integral part of developing Crystal Beach? I mean, was that always part of your plan, or did that come later? I've always loved living in Crystal Beach, and uh, and it's it's awesome to see it sort of taking the direction that it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's mm-hmm. something that I always believe could happen or would happen or sure, could happen. Sure. I remember being in high school, you know, in school, yeah. people would say, oh, like you're, like you're from Crystal Beach, you know, yeah, like yeah. almost looking down their nose kind of thing sure. in, a, in a joking way. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but when I started selling real estate, you know, houses in Crystal Beach were a dime a dozen. Like right, I was selling, right. I was selling cottages for 25 grand and 27 grand and 29 grand and they'd yeah. be on double lots, they'd be right beside the water, they'd be furnished. Yeah. Uh, people were buying vacant land uh, and cottages on their credit cards. <laughs> Uh, I'd be whipping around uh, Crystal Beach, handing out flyers that said, list your house with me, I'll cut your grass for free. So I was cutting all these lawns every Saturday, nothing was selling, and then I'd finally sell something, and I'd get a, a commission check for like $250, and I thought, well, that's it, I'm I'm. You I'm made set. it, you made I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I'll pay for my lawnmower gas money for the next uh, month, so. Well, um, well that's, kind of, that's kind of Crystal Beach back then. Yeah. Where, where do you see Crystal Beach in, say, five to 10 years? What's coming next? You know, I think the future looks so bright. Um, really, you had sort of a slow burn to sort of think, you, you started to see you know, some businesses open up, and South yeah. Coast is one of them, 10, yeah. 12 years ago yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, then you started to see maybe, you know, saw houses being fixed up. Then you yeah. saw a couple of new houses being built. And then right. you saw some businesses. And that yeah, led yeah. to bigger developments like like a South Coast Village with Mars. Right, right. Uh, and then, of course, what I think is really turbocharged things is uh, the town and the region got together and did the Bay Beach Park, which mm-hmm. uh, is an awesome amenity uh, mm-hmm. for everybody to enjoy. Um, so now I think we're starting to see uh, there's there's even if you drive around Crystal Beach, you can mm-hmm. still see, especially from the commercial point of things, uh, some business or sorry, sorry rather some buildings that sort of. Uh, are neglected and, and need a little love, but a lot of those buildings have turned over in the last few right. years. Right. And a lot of them have plans afoot, and some of them are already underway to see you know, new business and life being breathed back into those businesses. So, Getting back to South Coast Cookhouse then, why yeah. do you think it's so popular? I mean, I, just by the way, for those of you listening, I just want to explain the context. Can you hear how quiet it is? Like, I'm in here before South Coast opens. I've never seen the place so, I've never seen it empty. I, I, every time I come in here, it's packed. Like, so why is it as popular as it is? Uh, you know, uh, we've been really, really fortunate to, to do well. Um, we've had a lot of local support. We get a lot of support from tourists that come through the area. Honestly, I, I don't know the magic formula, but um, we try to have good food, consistent food, mm-hmm. uh, fair prices, good portion, good atmosphere. Mm-hmm. We try mm-hmm. to treat our staff well, so there's consistency on that end of things. Mm-hmm. And uh, just try to create a nice sort of vibe where you can come for a graduation party, or you can come mm-hmm. after work, yeah. or you can come by yourself, or you can come with a group of people. It's just sort of, um, just kind of a community. I always picture like a community little hub, you know, where people can like cheers. I agree. Kind of people I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows your name. Yeah, exactly. Um, and just as the last question, I want to ask you, Phil. Uh, just circling back on Bay Beach, this was the first year that the town charged admission. Right. What do you think went well, and what do you think will go differently next year? What was yeah. what were the takeaways? I think overall things went really, really well. Um, I think. Probably maybe one area of concern is uh, as a local resident, which both of us are, we're able to get a season's pass for $10, which I think is the best value there is. Yep. Yep. Um, but for a lot of non-residents, uh, to pay $5 per person per time, uh, maybe they can investigate doing some sort of a, a non-resident season's pass. That'd be you know, great. Maybe yeah. that's $20, maybe that's $25, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I think that that would be a benefit. Mm-hmm. And secondly, I would like to see, I don't think they had the ability to do season's passes at Bay Beach. You had to go down to Town Hall to do them. Yeah. So to have them there, I think would be a real benefit. I think so too. Another thing that we're working on, or sort of needs attention, 
and the town is committed to reviewing it and is reviewing it uh, with studies and whatnot. Um, and the BIA is certainly paying attention to this. Is is parking? You know right. how that? Right. Uh, how that? You got to sort of take the needs of the beachgoers that come in this during the season, but we also have to be aware of uh, the needs of the business people that are along Erie Road and Derby right. Road, and right. and they're here year round and they're paying taxes year round. Right. And we want to make sure there's as much um, easily accessible parking for them as we possibly can right. have. So there is a solution. Uh, the town is sort of committed to sort of looking at different things and that's all we can ask and uh, it's pretty exciting to see um, people be excited about the area. For sure. Uh, the town has invested a lot of time, a lot of resources into yeah. uh, into improving the area. So that's exciting. That's awesome. Great. Well, hey, for everybody listening, make sure you check out the links below the show. In the show notes, I'm going to conclude include links on how you can get in touch uh, with Phil and, of course, with South Coast Cookhouse as well. So thank you so much for being on the show, Phil. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. I thought we were just getting started. I'm looking forward to part two or part three. We can keep talking sometime. We, we absolutely will. <laughs> And we're back. Okay, so this uh, final segment of the show, this is where I usually cover community events. And I got to tell you guys, I was at a bit of a loss. This is the final episode of the season. So do I cover events for the next three months or <laughs> I'm going to just do the next seven days or so? Actually, I'm largely just going to focus on this weekend coming up, uh, starting with Friday, December the 13th. I want to mention uh, to start off that Christmas at the Ridge Film House is happening. Um, you can check out the link in the show notes below this episode to get exact uh, exactly what films are playing and at what time. Also happening uh, Friday, December the 13th, uh, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., uh, Fort Erie Job Gym uh, is hosting Job Search Help. So get free job search help from uh, qualified employment counselor Joe Brito. Uh, December the 13th, again, that's Friday. Friday the 13th, lots happening on Friday the 13th. Uh, at 5 p.m. until 6.30 p.m., the Fort Erie Lions are hosting their roast beef fundraising dinner. $12 for adults, $6 for kids 10 years old and younger. Okay, coming up on Saturday, December the 14th, my team, the Rosatani Real Estate Group, will be hosting Brunch with Santa at Bridgewater Country Club from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Now this event is technically sold out, but if you really want to go, what I want you to do is to call our team administrator, Holly Johnston, at 905-871-5555 and tell her that uh, Brent said she has an extra ticket for you. Okay, <laughs> try that and uh, we'll see how angry she is with me later, okay? Um, also happening Saturday, December the 14th, uh, Christmas Potluck and Trail Ride uh, at Sunny Ridge Ranch. That's happening from really all day, 11 a.m. until 9 p.m. Uh, as I understand it, the Trail Ride is at 11 a.m., but the Potluck starts at 5 p.m. There's gonna be some gift exchanges and some fun stuff like that. Uh, again, Saturday, December the 14th, 10 a.m. until 3 p.m p.m. you've got the last minute one stop spot to Christmas shop. Um, this is hosted by the Niagara Area Children's Assistance Program and it will be uh, at the Fort Erie Native Friendship Center. There's a bake sale, a raffle, uh, raffle table, free admission, dozens of crafters, vendors, direct sales, people, that sort of thing. Um, so come on out for that. Let's see, Saturday, December 14th. Man, it is a busy day on Saturday. 3 p.m. until unknown um, customer appreciation party or customer appreciation day is happening at South Sides. That means cheap drinks, complimentary food, uh, DJ karaoke, and uh, lots of good times. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Saturday, December the 14th, Neo Young Band is performing live in concert. That is, of course, a Neil Young tribute band. Uh, doors open at 7 p.m. at the Sanctuary Center for the Arts in Ridgeway, and the show starts at 8 p.m. And the last event I'll mention is Sunday, December the 15th, free photos with Santa at the Stevensville Garden Gallery and uh, kind of in partnership with Safari Niagara. So uh, there'll be a chance to take some photos and, as I understand, get um, some complimentary hot chocolate, chance to meet uh, maybe some special animals throughout the day as well. So that sounds exciting. Okay, that concludes uh, community events for this episode. Again, as a reminder, we kicked off this episode talking about the season one survey, and you can find the link, again, in the show notes below this episode at thefortyeriepodcast.com. Complete the short survey and have a chance to win $50 to the Village Boutique in Ridgeway. That covers everything for right now. Again, I'd love to tell you who my guest is going to be next week or next season, but I just don't know. I'm taking a break here for the holidays. Merry Christmas. Christmas to you all. I look forward to connecting with you again in the new year. 
You've been listening to the Fort Erie Podcast with your host, Brent Jones, a sales representative with Remax Niagara Realty Limited Brokerage. Follow at Buy with Brent on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates. Subscribe to the Fort Erie Podcast on popular platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify and catch a new bite-sized episode every week. Until next time.